Hello everybody and welcome back to another video of Heroes of the Storm. Today we are continuing our How to Tank series and we've landed upon Stitches. So if I pull up the tier list here, you see Stitches in the hybrid category. And this is because he doesn't have any offensive capability because he has no dive. He can't get in the enemy team's backline and, and just burst them. He's also not a defensive tank because he has no peels. He can't save your allies when they get dived from the bursty enemy. And yet he's still a super super viable tank this is for one reason and one reason only that reason being hook hook is an iconic moba ability every moba has it and every hero that has it in those mobas feels so good it is a high mana cost high cooldown low damage hard to hit straight line skill shot but if you land it can turn the tide of a game um and that's what makes stitches so impactful so you want to be picking stitches into games where uh, enemy team are kind of hard to get to. So we're talking about Li Mings, Junkrats, uh, Sergeant Hammers, Chromies, heroes like that. You don't want to be picking him into team comps that have a lot of summonable minions, such as Nazebos, Zul's, uh, Anubarax, things like that, where they can summon minions to block your hooks, because your hook is what makes stitches a, a, a real hero. If you take his hook away, he would never get played and be removed from the game. Additionally, Stitches does very well for a tank in his wave clear department. So if you need a little bit more wave clear on your team comp, you can pick Stitches. And if the enemy team has a lot of self sustain in the fights, you can also pick Stitches because he has a talent to reduce the healing that uh, enemies do whenever he activates his trait. So he's a very niche pick, but you see him so often because he's so much fun to play. And that's what I'm going to try to showcase you to you today. So we'll jump to the game and hopefully have some fun. All right, so we found ourselves on the Infernal Shrines today. I forgot to mention it earlier, but another thing that Stitches needs is he's one of the few tanks that is map dependent. So for instance, you don't want to be picking Stitches on Infernal Shrines because the minions and monsters that spawn here at uh, the objectives will block your hooks, making it nearly impossible to land a successful hook on the objective, especially whenever you have an Anubrak making a million beetles for you. Um, <clears throat> but with that being said, you're still going to do your best. He likes maps such as, um, I'm trying to think of good ones. He likes Tomb of the Spider Queen and uh, Towers of Doom because they have very predictable um, movement patterns through the lanes. So, here in the early game, what we're going to try to do, as you saw right there, I sent out a hook and it was very short range. Stitch's hook in the early game is very small and quite unimpactful. Um, it becomes very impactful whenever you hit uh, later in the game with... Uh, especially level 13 is your big power spike. Um, I actually tried recording this video t once already today and came up against this Zul'jin, uh, healer duo stack. And they're decent. Um, but I also played against the same exact Anubarak. And I don't like playing against Anubarak's as stitches because I will hook a million beetles. Um... But using our good wave clear, we're going to try to get to the later stages of the game, such as level 10 and 13, which are your big power spikes. Uh, 10, because you get an ultimate. That's obviously ultimates are good. We like ultimates. Come on, use your W. Oh, he dashed out. What a nerd. Um, I'll go ahead and tap here quickly. And then 13, because that's whenever your hook range gets increased. You can see there's the range of my, my Q currently. It's uh, about half the length of a screen where your or three-quarter length of a screen where your hook later in the game oh my god i hit the damn minion um your hook later in the game becomes about a full screen length meaning you can land hooks you normally should not be able to land hopefully i can push this minion wave in uh all the way to the the tower unfortunately though 
this is exactly what happened last last game is I tr did my best to soak and friendly team just fed mid uh, giving the Zuljin he ended the game with like a hundred stacks on his level one or not level one quest but his trait um because there's really not much we can do against this enemy team uh, not not in the early stage of the game we need our alt to put them into our towers or we need our uh, hook to disposition them significantly away from their team um we actually trade decently into a lot of heroes i gotta be a little bit careful because i could get picked but i don't think that they'll, ro they'll rotate here all right let me just let me just walk out of here give me give me a second buddy <laughs> Um, we trade very favorably because we have a huge heal, so he can kind of, I can kind of, to an extent, uh, solo lane. I'm interested if Suljin's on his camp. I have a feeling he might be. Okay, he's not. Good. Um, so we'll go ahead in here, and I want to get rid of this objective as fast as possible, so I'll help the friendly team clear it. Once again, using our pretty good wave clear for a tank to help burst down these minions. Uh, we're already up by over halfway on minions. <clears throat> All I can really do is try to position myself on this lower half so there's less monsters in the way for whenever um, the enemy team engages. So I can possibly land a hook, but it looks like friendly team did a fantastic job. Oh, I missed. Lame. Did a fantastic job of just bursting down the objective, and we get a very fast early objective. Um, Alright, level 7 is when you have to decide if you think your hooks are going to be impactful this game, or if your teamfight presence is going to be more impactful. I personally want my hooks to be more impactful, so that's what I'm going to spec into. Um, so we're going for better hooks rather than uh, healing reduction. My ally should be able to just walk out fine and alright. He gets dived, I'll totally, totally hook this guy. Unfortunately, Brightwing's there to save him uh, from any sort of shenanigans I might pull. Break my wall, please. I like you breaking my walls. I mean, my allies don't, but I do. We'll just ensure that the Butcher dies. It costs us one ally, but I mean, a small price to pay, honestly. Especially for two kills? This is huge. And friendly team wrecked the bottom lane. Uh, I'll tell you what. This time around, my team is killing the macro game uh last game we actually had diva murky and they did their best to um they did their best to soak but they were getting out pushed by an asmodan and zul so there wasn't a whole lot that they could do uh rapidly approaching level 10 thanks to the wonderful soak of our asmodan um, which will enable me to pick up Gorge, which is my one of my favorite alts in, in the entire game. Can I land anything here? Not quite able to. <laughs> um, I don't know who I want to be. Who I want to be gorging? Because that's what you want to kind of be thinking about uh, at this stage of the game is who's going to be the most successful gorge target. We know we're not allowed to gorge the Anubarak or the Genji typically ever unless their cooldowns are down. So we have to count their cooldowns. Um. The Brightwing, after she hits 10, will probably be impossible to gorge. The Zul'jin, uh, after he hits 10, will be difficult to gorge because I have to either wait for him to uh, use Tezdingo, not have Tezdingo, um, or I have to wait for him to just be low enough that my R executes. Because if you gorge an enemy who is below the execute range, uh, or below 422 health, then it, it will just execute them whenever you pop them out. Meaning if Zul'jin's being greedy and trying to save his Tazdingo, I can just munch on him, and that's game over for him. I'm going to post up a little bit lower now uh, to slow this enemy team's rotation here. Yeah, I don't care if they hit me because we get the building in top lane. Uh, at least we should. Yeah, there we go. And now we can disengage. Um... I gotta wait for Butcher to charge. Charge somebody, Butcher. Alright, maybe we'll just try to save our ally here. Once again, if 
yeah, they used an ult to kill him, so there's not much I could have done. Uh, we at least saved the, the one ally. With the beetles, it's very difficult to do much of anything. We'll munch uh, and try to run. He'll probably get the dingo off. Oh, yeah, that's a dingo and a half. And his ally might save him in time. Yeah, but my, my cooldown is shorter, so... Oof. Unfortunate. Uh, he shouldn't have gone back in there, and we will lose top lane because of that. I was kind of hoping Azman would be on the objective, but uh, he is most certainly not on the objective. Get a little bit of healing rolling from these regen globes, and kind of maybe save our building? It would be nice if we could. Looks like they'll back out and try to take it another time, and this game is progressing, which means I get stronger. Hitting a huge power spike here. Um, with level 13, our hook is now significantly longer. Uh, my gorge is coming up rather soon, and I need to be taking note of which buildings still have walls. It looks like our mid and bottom fort still have a wall, so those are prime gorging areas. If I can land something on the Zul'jin here, he is getting in my belly and going away. Uh, so that'll be the end of him. I don't even have to kill him. Watch this. I just put him in there and run. He's dead. I don't even have to deal with him. Um, <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and try to just help the friendly team finish out the rest of this fight. I'm trying to look for a hook. Uh, maybe there we'll hit something. Oh, unfortunate how that lined up. And this is probably the death of our uh, ally healer, though. A nice ultimate from the... Um, from the Mephisto, trying to get some stuff done on these enemies. We're going to go ahead and hook the Brightwing out of her heal, which enables us to get a double kill. That's one thing that I have to, I cannot stress enough. Your hook can and should be used as a mini hook if it can stun an enemy out of an ability. Such as right there, I used it to stun the um, enemy Brightwing out of her, out of her Z. Enabling us to get the kill. Now, he does have Taz Dingo, but I do have Gorge. So, if we play this properly, he just dies. Put him in the belly, and he dies. Once again, I, I don't even have to deal with him. He's, he's, he's dead. So, Gorge can be quite a strong counter to Taz Dingo when you use it properly. But this does, of course, mean you need your team to help react uh, to you properly as well. Um, another thing, whenever you're playing Stitches or playing with a Stitches on your team, break the, uh, the walls. It'll severely increase your team's capabilities to, uh, set up plays and make good plays. Um, does look like Butcher's going in crazy, so we're gonna try to help out our ally. Um, although he doesn't quite even need it. Uh, need my help at least. As Butcher presses his R, loses... Uh, I guess he didn't lose any meat because he's fully stacked. But this game's going beautifully thus far. Uh, <clears throat> so that last fight at the objective went so well because the enemy team's high damage Zul'jin was not there for 100% of the fight. We'll go ahead and hook him out. He doesn't have Dingo up. We're going to put him in my belly and that'll execute him. Once again, just don't have to deal with him uh, because he was low enough. But with that being said... I do have to be slightly careful. Oh, I was... The, the, one of them would have been dead if, if I didn't get... Uh-oh! A little bit scared. I didn't think Butcher would be back this soon. We're going to start by dealing damage to the... Uh, trying to deal damage to that Genji because I wanted to be the one to tank the tower for my friendly team because I have such a high HP pool. Um, it's totally cool to just face tank buildings uh, with our large heal and high HP pool. We're positioning farther back than my allies right now to save them. Ugh. Oh. To save them whenever they get butcher charged. But uh, <laughs> Mephisto had other plans. Um, Does look like all the enemies are back. I might be dead here if I can't get my... Oh, what an ult. Um, I might still be dead. We're going to hit him up with a, a TY for thank you. Um, and just, I guess, carry on our way. Friendly team is popping off today. Mephisto with high damage numbers. Asmodan wrecking them in Siege and Soak. And, uh, our healer is not healing a lot, honestly, but healing impactfully. The Brightwing has been doing a lot of AFK healing, is what we'll call it, where all of her heals have come from, uh, her trait. Just spitting out pixie dust every four seconds. 
waiting for my Asmodan's dunk to land before I press my ability to help him out, uh, and positioning far away from my allies so I can land a helping hand when the Anubarak engages. <clears throat> I'm now going to try to time my gorge around objectives, because this fight, we won it because Zul'jin was dead for the objective. So we need to be timing our gorge around the objective. Um, or to save an ally, of course. That doesn't mean I can't look for any hooks. A uh, little bit of poke damage out there on the Genji. Um, and I would be fine to fight now because the objective's up. I think if I get a pick now, they won't quite be there for the start of the objective. Um, yeah, so we're going to look for any sort of engagement we can. Can't hook the Anubarak, though. Can't hook the Brightwing. So it has to be the Zul'jin or the Butcher. Or Genji, who's used all of his abilities. Uh, we're a little bit split, so I don't really want to gorge anybody now. And we are also on even talent tiers. Uh, we are both at 16s. We're very close to hitting our 20, and I think Azrodan's going to try to backdoor their core, which, I mean, I'm fine with. <laughs> that would be cool with me. Uh, unfortunately, we have no building really to fall back to. It's there, but it's low. I'll trade an Azrodan life for an objective if we can get it. <laughs> he left the game. <laughs> oh, boy. Um... I don't think that they had to use Lambda the Slaughter there. So I need to be very cautious of that for my allies. Alright, helping handing my one ally to try to save him. Gonna go ahead and gorge the Butcher. Unfortunately getting hit barely by all of the uh, crowd controls of the Anubarak. And thankfully though, my ally is hitting some nice abilities here. He'll dingo this for sure, right? Minions kill him. Okay, he had the dingo up. He just neglected to use it. We need 11 more minions uh, to win this fight. Oh, chunky Anubarak got in the way. Your Brightwing would have been gone. And I'm just going to start getting on the Brightwing. Uh, okay, she runs away, but that means she can't save her allies. Ow, Butcher, you're mean. He is going absolutely crazy in here. Try to land a hook on him, getting him deeper into our building, uh, and hopefully killing him. Brightwing, I think, has her Z up soon. He's healing for so much off of me, ironically. Whoopsies. Uh, trying to hook someone in the minion wave there. Probably not the best the best use of that ability, but with Master Hooker at 20, which is, once again, quite a, quite a good power spike, um, we are able to just get our cooldown up much faster. Um, and Asmodan's just going to end the video game, uh, as well as this objective that our Samro's capping. Um, we're gonna try, we'll ping, we're coming right here. So we're gonna send out a helping hand, which we're able to land to save our Asmodan from imminent death. And, uh, now all we have to do to ensure the win of this game is not get hit by a 15-man lamb to the slaughter, and make sure that the Tazdingo doesn't Tazdingo properly. Unfortunately, he had his, his ability up still, but my ability is on a shorter cooldown now because of uh, well cooldown management. Thank you for breaking me out of the... I'll actually put this guy inside of the gorge if I can get to him. Oh, maybe not. Oh, no. Oh, God. Well, your, your core is dead, so heck you, buddy. So, uh, honestly, we got a little bit carried this game <clears throat> by the friendly team. Uh, they absolutely owned... But, with that being said, we also enabled a lot of fights to be advantageous for us, where the Zul'jin wasn't alive for the fights, um, or the Brightwing couldn't get her impactful heals off because we were stopping it. So, definitely got carried uh, in the Siege aspect by Asmodan and the rest of my team, uh, but also held our own in the team fights by um, just making it be a 4v5. <clears throat> We'll go ahead and discuss the build now, as we do in all these tank videos. I discuss them at the end. And this build that I went is a build that I go in about 99% of my games. So at level 1, I like Patchwork Creation, um, which whenever you read the other talents at this tier, it sounds like the worst off the bat, but it's the best because you don't have to stress about getting globes 24-7, uh, and you don't have to bite people when it's not a good time to bite people. You'll have those things up all the time. So... Instead, your W now grants you three armor for every hero hit up to eight times, which is a lot of armor, especially when you factor in it doubles when you press your trait. So, um, 
as as well as increasing the healing you receive from allies this gives you a whole lot more hp than the other talents would give you except maybe if you get like a hundred globes from the globe quest but that takes a lot of time and dedication whereas with this you can just focus on positioning and landing hooks uh then vile cleaver you pick this because this enables your w to always apply your vile gas which applies your armor um whereas before it would just be heroes that are hit by your inner circle or inner cone and then additionally it gives you a little bit more wave clear because your basic attacks crit and obviously you're dealing more poison damage to the minion wave uh then serrated edge as mentioned before you would pick putrefaction here if you need more healing or anti-heals in the fight anti-heals would have been pretty good against the butcher but personally i felt serrated edge just in most of my games, it's more impactful because like we talked at the start of this video, you pick stitches whenever you want to have um, someone who just displaces enemies. You pick stitches for the hook. That's the only reason you pick stitches. Uh, Gorge, because it's the better alt in my opinion. Uh, not to say Putrid Bile is to never be picked. It's to be picked often. But Gorge, I mean, you've seen it shut down Zul'jin almost completely. In the previous game I played against that Zul'jin, this duo here, um... He wrecked our team. He had like 100 plus stacks and so much damage. Um, then at 13, all the level 13s suck. And it feels like you don't get a level 13 talent pick. But the reason Blizzard does this is because you automatically get a uh, long-ranged hook at level 13. So that's why 13 is such a big power spike. I picked Meat Hook. It, in it gives you a little heal. 20% uh, of your maximum HP heal, which can combo well with other talents, such as the Globe Quest at level 1. And then additionally, basic attacks refresh this heal. So it can be impactful, but not as impactful as I'd like. Um, level 16, I went Pulverize because I felt I needed more peels. If I needed more damage and wave clear, I would have gone uh, the AoE damage one. I forget what it's called. It's like burning something. Um, but it, this allows me to press W, and any enemy hit by my W is slowed by 70% 70, 70 for 3 quarters of a second, which enables you to land easier hooks as well. Speaking of hooks, we picked up Master Hooker at 20, which reduces the cooldown of hook by 4 seconds, which I believe if you land a hook, yeah, it reduces your hook's cooldown to 8 seconds in total, so you go from a 16 second cooldown to an 8 second cooldown on your hook, which is too short of a cooldown for uh, a, a such a powerful ability additionally uh it reduces enemy team's healing which is another reason why i often pick uh serrated edge over the putrefication talent because you get your anti-heal it just comes a lot later and it's a little harder to land and you can also make allies unkillable so if they're getting pyroblasted it can save them in that event but that is how to tank with stitches um, I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. Please let me know down in the comments if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, and I'll do my best to answer them. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. You saved that all, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of Get in, Duffy, get in! Get in! Get in! Get in the chopper! <laughs> World's shortest meta. <laughs> 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 it's a Medivh portal, <laughs> don't be lied to.